what I want to do is to sweep through the big topic, the big questions, and hopefully some of the bigger answers as we go. Now, I'm just moving there to a full screen so my slides look prettier. And as Gail said, the topic is understanding how open chains ISO standards are relevant to inner source. The reason we're having this conversation is that open chain is well known for making standards that support open source. And that implies that things like open source program offices would be most interested in what we do. But as this talk will reveal, our standards were designed to support the open source ecosystem, but the challenges they solve are equally applicable to what you do in inner source. Right, so the simple challenge that everyone faces from our optic is supply chain management. In essence, we have a mental model of the supply chain as various you know, entities sharing stuff. There's someone at the very beginning, there's someone at the very end, stuff is flowing. And this model is accurate in some ways, but it leaves out, let's say the human factor, the management factor. And while our model of the supply chain can look pretty elegant, the actual supply chain has humans in it and looks kind of like a spaghetti monster. It's a little bit chaotic. Now, when we look at the data that people are pulling out about the supply chain, you see that there are very high numbers of issues out there. In our context, we started in open source and the reasons are pretty clear. Most industry verticals use open source. You know, the industry vertical that, for instance, Synopsys had a look at with the least use of open source had 93% of its code bases touched by open source in actuality. Over half of those uh, code bases had license compliance issues and over 80% security issues. Now, for those of you who've done software for a while, so our entire audience, um, you'll know that the issues that we see with open source in license compliance or security are not unique. All software has similar challenges. All software has similar metrics. Stuff goes wrong. Now, the thing that we deal with is the supply chain. And it's very important, I think, to conceptually understand, to remember that not all supply chains are external. We're in a situation, if we were to model it, that the supply chain looks like this. There's code, in our case, flowing across entities. Right, so the model of the supply chain we might have in our head is this, entities passing code. Um, when we zoom in to a supply chain, in this case, zooming into a supply chain, in this case, a company to company supply chain, we will discover internal supply chains in a company. It might be teams, it might be departments, it might be individuals passing code around. So in essence, the actual supply chain looks like internal activities with code, then entities, uh, companies, then passing the code through the overarching supply chain. In short, then everywhere, everything is a supply chain. Or in our case, we just think of it as one giant supply chain that needs to be managed. So with that mental model that everything is the supply chain, that's where we come in. We're looking at a bunch of diverse companies getting together and saying to themselves, if we need to manage all of this, if we need to improve the supply chain, internal and external, what is it that we need to do? Different industry verticals, let's say infrastructure, automotive, cloud, they all share that common challenge. When we put the optic of open source, they have almost identical requirements for dealing with the process points, but everyone was doing different stuff which, if you consider the complexity of the supply chain, dramatically increases the chance of things going wrong. And that means it increases remediation costs to fix the wrongness, and it decreases time to market because of that friction. Now, to address this, OpenChain was set up to deal with the very high level, the process management. 
So think of it as a framework approach. There's all types of standards. There's all types of implementation methodologies out there. But OpenChain was designed to put down a blueprint for overall process management. And if you put OpenChain at, let's say, the top of a pyramid, get started there, then you move into implementation. Perhaps you're at implementation standards. Then you're looking at methods. So external supply chains, your methods might include having an OSPO, might in include doing stuff like metrics with something like chaos. Internal supply chain, swap out the to-do group logo for the inner source logo. You're looking at an inner source program office, which can usefully apply process management standards can usefully align with things like um, SBOM implementation standards and so on and so forth. Very simple concept. To execute it was not quite as simple. Execution in this term meant we needed some form of alignment in the market. We needed a way to bring together all of the responsible parties, thinking organizations, the legal entities are legally responsible. What can bring the solution into them? And the answer was ISO standards, specifications, these type of things can be adopted by organizations quite easily. And in the context of a supply chain, they can be part of procurement cycles and other requirements. Now, in our case, we have built so far two ISO standards, one for license compliance and one for security assurance. These ISO standards are focused on things like having flexible program sizes. Whether it's an OSPO or an inner source program office, you want to be able to scope it. Virtual, actual staffed. Is it going to cover a product team? Is it going to cover a department? Would it be company wide? Et cetera, et cetera. We designed the standards to be flexible on that, focusing on inbound processes, internal and outbound process points. And that, to you know, be utterly clear, applies to teams as well as entities. If there's a team that's taking software in, doing something with it, sending it out, it needs the same process points as an entire company. Question is, how do you make that work? Well, you focus on the points. You don't focus on the details. You let people choose what they're up to. Do they want to have a detailed way of analyzing inbound software, or do they just want to, for example, quickly check what's the license and make a note of it? Both approaches can be valid. It's up to people to scope what's appropriate. Now, it's all very well to have a bright idea, but the question is, what's the bright idea doing in the world to solve problems, to address challenges? And in our case, uh, we've made some real progress. The first ISO standard, the ISO standard for open source license compliance has had significant adoption. Now, if you're familiar with standardization, particularly something like ISO, and particularly something in our case, open standards, you'll know there's very little barrier to entry. So we don't have direct knowledge of everyone using our standards. But when it comes to 5230, about 121 companies have come to us and said, yes, we're using your standards. Um, you can put our logo on your website. Let's talk about it. Let's communicate it to the rest of the supply chain that this is happening. So as an example, globally, recently Nokia, Open Harmony, KT, Samsung SDS have come to us with recent adoption announcements. One data point on our ISO standard for license compliance comes out of Germany. And we had a situation where PwC sponsored in-depth analysis. They, they went to over a thousand companies um, supporting Bitcom, which is an industry um, organization. They hold great events and so on and so forth. Anyway, PwC sponsored a survey. And in the demographics they spoke to, in the analysis they did, um, they found that 31% of large German companies, companies with over 2,000 employees, already use or plan to adopt our ISO standard for license compliance. I guess one of the reasons is that we try to make this adoption of the process management as easy as possible. 
we're particularly interested in how to avoid things being complex and particularly interested in thinking how can we give people plenty of approaches, plenty of methods to get this done. The fundamental mechanisms for adoption of our standards and adoption of many other standards are to choose between self-certification, third-party certification. Self-certification is essentially looking at a checklist and thinking, yes, I can check all of these boxes. This is what we're doing. Or looking at the checklist and thinking we're missing ABC and in that context, thinking we can probably optimize by adopting what the rest of the industry have learned over the last 20 years for minimal remediation, faster time to market. Third-party certification is the other end of the spectrum. That's where a third party, for example, a certifier like Punovera test, Ted Nord, comes in and does the certification for you. They're the ones with checklists in their hands. They identify the things they think are not sufficient. They help you build it. Obviously, self-certification is immediately um, a cheaper and quicker option for most parties, but third-party certification is an important choice, particularly in regulation-heavy industries. The rationale and so on and so forth and the effectiveness of self-certification, I'm not going to go into details, but I'm going to tell you that it's been very effective on the self-certification side. And whether it's a small, you know, very narrowly scoped um, conformance, a program that has decided to, let's say, make a program using our standard that covers a couple of products, that covers a team, or it's a large program entity-wide. For example, the case of Bosch, the whole company is conformant to ISO 5230. It's been equally effective. And self-certification, when we started, I'll be frank, there were questions, you know, will people cheat? Will they just be like, yes, 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 of course. And on external supply chains, will that cause trouble? And no, we've, we've never actually had a report in the last eight years of someone cheating and causing trouble in the supply chain. Self-certification is very effective. Third-party certification, like I, like I said, industries with regulation, situations where companies or organizations are saying, look, I want to be able to really strongly say we've been audited as meeting this standard. It's there. The community is the most important thing when it comes to real world adoption. Uh, what's important is to bring people together, share ideas, make sure that the communication between the parties shares the knowledge and the value and particularly shares let's call it the bug fixes. Any organization making any process change will run into some tensions as they go. You're effectively driving a car and replacing part of it at the same time. If you're dealing with an operational team, an operational company and adjusting something. Our community is mostly community community, uh, user companies, user organizations, individuals, getting together and sharing knowledge. As someone using this, in, in our case, open source mostly, um, what have I learned? Or conversely, coming in and saying, I want to use these standards, what do I do? So, you know, we've got global work groups working on education. We've got industry specific groups in areas like automotive and telecom. Uh, we've got regional work groups operating in their own languages. As well as the pure community activities, um, we've been building a lot of reference material. So trying to codify things, make them more formal in the sense of, can I have reference open source training slides? Yes, here they are. Self-certification, it's all very well to say a checklist. How do I make a checklist out of an ISO standard? Don't worry, here you go. And so on and so forth, including things like policy templates where people are saying, I want a policy. I know it's a requirement of your standards to have a policy, uh, but what type of policy? So we made template materials so people can make Lego blocks of uh, options in making a policy. And of course, then there's the commercial support side of things. ISO standards can be supported by any party. Um, but in our case, we have an official partner program 
where we say to people, you can be part of this. If you really know the domain, if you really understand our standards and you're willing to contribute back to that user community, maybe you'll help us with translation. You'll help us with building new things. Right now, we're getting a huge amount of help from two organizations, Orcro, a small company in the UK, and um, we've seen a lot of help from Deloitte, the German section of Deloitte, on building CC0, effectively public domain, maturity modeling around our ISO standards, which is pretty cool. I'm really here to say that we've built some stuff to deal with code flows in the supply chain. And the idea is to deal with specifically at the moment, license compliance matters, and of course, security assurance matters. We started with the optic, our focus, let's get the open source supply chain fixed. But the process points we've identified are equally applicable to dealing with any software. You know, on inbound, check what are the terms, license optic. Inbound, check on security, what are the known vulnerabilities. Have a policy for dealing with this stuff. Have people responsible. Have training. Outbound, do the same, and so on and so forth. Now, talking more is where I'd like to go on the one-to-one, -one, but I'd also like to say that what we really want to do is to bring you in. Inner source is equally important. All of these inner source program offices that are forming around the world are addressing how innovation flows through companies. We have process management that can help support this, not just in terms of the immediate, the moment that you're doing this, but also in terms of the long term, when that stuff that's flowing through the company is heading into the external supply chains, can we align the process management? Could we all be using the same approach? Could we avoid translating our governance processes again and again and again? And the answer is, uh, of course, we can all align around the same optimized approaches. And that's my pitch.